Okay. So we're going to roll two dice. Now the question that we should probably ask ourselves at this stage is, uh, what does the sample space, what does the sample space, okay, for a two die experiment, what does the sample space look like? Okay. Uh, well, it's all possible outcomes where it's going to be all the possible values that we could get for the first die associated with all the possible values that we could get with the second die. Now, what I've done here is, uh, just for this particular experiment, okay, what I've done is I've printed out the sample space. Okay, We could say that this is the first die down here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and the second die is listed across here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And what we have here is we have a listing of all possible ordered pairs or pairings. The first die's value is a 1. The second die's value is a 1, giving us 1, 1. The first die values is a 1. The second die is a 2, giving us 1, 2. The first one is a 1. The second one is a 3, giving us 1, 3. The first die value being a 4. The second die value being a 4 give us, gives us the order pair 4, 4. Okay. So in this situation here, the sample space, okay, the sample space consists of 36 ordered pairs. Okay, so let's just keep that in mind. So now let's ask some probabilities uh, in relation to in relation to this particular in relation to this particular sample space. Okay. So what's the probability? Okay. So what's the probability? Yeah. Okay. That when we roll a die, okay, that the first number. Okay, that the first number that we roll, okay, is a let's say is a one. Okay, uh, so well let's actually just leave at this for the moment. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that the first number is a one, and the second number could be any number. Okay. So in this situation here, okay, what we're interested in is how many ordered pairs have we got in this particular sample space that have the first number as a one? Well, there's one. Two, three, four, five, six ordered pairs out of a possible of 36. That's the size of the sample space. So we have six chances in 36, or you have a one in six chance of rolling rolling a one on the first die. Okay. Uh, let's let's have a look at another situation. Let's say we ask the question: what's the probability, okay, that the outcome of the experiment, okay, is a number Okay, who's let's say the outcome of the experiment that when we add the two die values together, okay, we get three, okay, or when we sum the two die values together, okay, that we get let's say that we get a five, okay. So let's have a look at this, okay. So this is the sum, the sum of the outcomes, the sum of the outcomes, okay. So, based on our previous rule, the addition rule, when we use an OR, okay, okay, what we're interested in is we're interested in applying either version 1 when they're mutually exclusive or version 2 when they're not mutually exclusive. So, in this particular situation here, it's going to be minimum the sum of the individual probabilities. So, this is going to be equal to the probability that, the, let's, let's call it the sum is 3, plus the probability that the sum is 5, okay. Uh, let's figure out this probability here. What's the chances that the sum of the two die adds to three? Okay. Well, how many values in our sample space have a sum equal to three? Well, there's the one and two here gives us three, and there's the two and one here gives us three. Let's just circle them. So there's two chances. So to roll two die and the sum to be equal to three, you've got two chances out of a total of 36. So you've got two chances in 36. Plus, what's the probability that the sum is 5? Okay. Well, where is the sum equal to 5? Okay. Well, we have the 1 and 4 here. We have the 2 and 3. We have the 3 and 2. And we have the 4 and 1. All give us a sum of 5. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4 chances. Okay. 4 chances for the second event. 4 chances out of 36. And once again, hopefully what we can see is that when we looked at the first event, which is along here, and the second event along here, that there was no commonality, there was nothing shared across them, there was no double counting. 
in which case we know that the two events are mutually exclusive and the probability is simply equal to the sum of the individual probabilities. So it's equal to, you've got six chances in 36, which is a one in six chance. Okay. Let's do another example. Okay. In this case here, a little bit more complicated, uh, I'm interested in what's the probability that the sum of the two die, let's say, is equal to, let's say, seven, okay, or, okay, or the first value, the first die, the first die gives a value equal to, let's say, equal to, equal to two, okay, equal to two. Once again, the or means that this is the addition rule, so minimum, this is going to be equal to the sum of the individual probabilities. It's going to be the probability that the sum is equal to 7, plus the probability that the first die has a face value equal to 2. Okay, so let's do this. Let me get a clean sample space here, one that I've printed out, printed a couple of these out for these experiments. Okay, so let's get a clean sample space. Here we go. So, when it comes to the probabilities, okay, we're interested in what's the probability that the sum is seven? Okay. So where do we have a sum of seven? Okay. Well, a one and six is a seven, a two and five is a seven, a three and four is a seven, four and three gives a seven, five and two gives a seven, and six and one gives a seven. So what we can actually see is for the first event, okay, the probability that the sum is seven, we have one, two, three, four, five, six favorable outcomes out of 36. That gives us six out of 36 chances. Plus, well, what about the second event? The probability that the first die is equal to two. Okay. Well, where are these guys here? They're along here. That's equal to two. That's equal to two. The first die is equal to two. The first die is equal to two. The first die here is equal to two, and the first die here is equal to two. Once again, we have one, two, three, four, five, six chances. So we have six chances out of 36. Okay. Now, the question we need to ask ourselves now is, are these two events mutually exclusive of each other? If they're mutually exclusive, we shouldn't have done any double counting. And what we can actually see here is that we've double counted here the ordered pair two, five. We've counted it once in relation to the event where the sum of the die is 7. Okay? And we've counted it twice in relation to the, the, the event where the first die is equal to 2. Okay? So we've overcounted. And what is that thing that we've overcounted? It's the thing where the sum is 7 and the first die is 2. So based on our rule, our addition rule, when they're not mutually exclusive, we need to take away the joint the joint event. Okay, so let's do that. So in this situation here, we need to take away the probability that the sum is seven and the first die's value is equal to two. Okay. How many of them are there? Well, there's only one thing in here that has a sum of seven and the first die is a two. So we need to take away a one in 26 chance. Okay, which gives us Six and six gives us twelve. We have twelve thirty-sixes minus one thirty-six gives us we have eleven chances out of thirty-six okay, of rolling two die and the sum being equal to seven or the first the first die's value is equal to two. Okay, guys, uh, this was Jonathan Lambert of the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, this particular short video, video was dealing with the addition rule. The key thing to take away from this particular rule is there's two cases. There's the general case, okay? and then there's the case where the two events are mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive events are events that don't share anything in common. Uh, and non-mutually exclusive events are events that share. When we count, we end up double counting or triple counting, or, but we end up over counting, yeah? Okay? In which case we have to take away how many of them things that we've over counted relative to the total, the total uh, size of the sample space. In other words, we have to take away the probability okay, of the joint event.
Okay, guys, uh, once again, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And I hope this short video was somewhat helpful.